After two very successful seasons as a manager, Stefan Bell and Hertha Berlin are both back where they feel they belong, in the Bundesliga. Despite having a top quality squad for the second tier, the team still needs strengthening for the Bundesliga. Despite not being the highest overall, look how young and exciting this Berlin team is. Karim Konati could be this year's Bundesliga surprise talent. We also picked up a Brazilian defensive midfielder called Diaz for a free and Karbalnik is just hitting his peak. The majority of our fairly modest budget it though was saved for one man. We needed a new starting striker. Aubameyang was key for us to get promoted, but his preseason rating drop has reduced him back to a backup at best. Our director of football suggested four targets. Sesco costs too much, Brobby costs too much, Orban costs too much, and Bolligan is absolutely not interested in joining. We're really going to be going into the season with a 37 year old and someone who's never even played in the Bundesliga as our starting strikers? Well, as the window advanced, we got more and more desperate. We were checking the transfer list every few days to try and find a bargain, and finally, one appeared. Luka Jovic. £19 million of budget was spent on a man who scored 25 goals in 54 games for Frankfurt, and we felt much more confident about our attack. I'll need to play pre-season to learn how he plays and give you a full review. Of course, the first time we actually used him on the pitch was in training, but in the two games he started, he was actually really good. So I'm looking forward to this season, and I think he could be a star striker. I have to say, I do really like using him. But then again, there's not one player in this team that I don't like using. In fact, I'm so confident that we'll be trying to complete another challenge this season. I'm betting that we can hit at least 25 goals for Jovic and another 10 with Kanate. So leave your guesses in the comments right now. As the fans are only whispering this in the crowd, there is actually a little bit of hope that Hertha Berlin could even finish in the top half of the season. After pre-season ended, Zach Stefan joined in goal and Colin Dagba joined as a right back, meaning that our team now went from looking like this to looking like this. It's a big improvement and I'm sure you'll agree with it, but that's about all the strengthening we did. The whole team was on high morale and we were absolutely ready for the season. Quite a lot of second division players actually wanted some of our successful squad from last year, so we decided it was probably for the best if we promoted Abe, our 66 rated 17 year old Japanese goalkeeper into the first team. You can see how many random players got released or sold, Andreas Bukalakis right here, 35 years old, we never used him last year and we managed to get 5 million pounds for him. This means we'll have a budget of about 20 million more pounds to spend in the January transfer window, so that's going to be massive if we're anywhere near as good as we think we are. But anyway, the season was about to start. We were taking a trip to one of the most disliked teams in the league, Hoffenheim of course, a team that doesn't have that many fans and that's probably because they're from a village with the population of around three and a half thousand people. We have a massive capital city behind us, we were absolutely going for the win in game week one. Because we now have Konate and Jovic up front, we knew that we could start spamming crosses and we could actually press quite a bit higher than when we had Aubameyang. The work rates here are absolutely amazing. They're good in the air, they can run and they can finish. So we have a lot of threat up front. We were pushing for it. Jovic getting his first chance right here after just two minutes, his killed effort hitting the crossbar. Of course, we're gonna keep pushing and pushing. A really powerful pass was controlled brilliantly by Jovic. He ran through and there's no way he's gonna miss that. That's one of the 25 complete. A great start of the season for Hertha Berlin and for our new signing, Luka Jovic. With our 1-0 lead away from home, we were absolutely going to try to not get complacent. Of course, Hoffenheim are a very lethal team. They've got a lot of top players, but Risha there testing Zach Stefan, making his first Bundesliga start. Let's hope that Stefan has the same impact our goalkeeper had last year. Some absolutely amazing saves coming from him. The Hoffenheim double target man strategy nearly paying off for them there from the corner. Jovic had another shot. That was some so far out. That must have been such low XG and he really did test the goalkeeper. More pressing forward from Hoffenheim. Long staff getting into the box, but that is a great block there from Desena. Hoffenheim with the corner, and we know they're a threat from them, but they decide to go short. Is that going to be a mistake? Minamino wins the ball. His pass is absolutely terrible, and we have been punished for it. Mariki getting the ball, and that is the equaliser that we were fearing. We're going to keep pushing on, though. Now into the 83rd minute. Minamino, can he make up for it? It was a decent cross, and in another day, Kanate could have been tapping that one in, but we still need to keep pushing. Cruz with a long shot, the youngster, and that's some real inexperience being shown right there. He had better options. He could have passed it through, and with just seconds left on the clock, the referee is going to confirm we have drawn our first game back into the Bundesliga. But it's not that bad, because Hoffenheim will be at the top of the table come the end of the season. 
season. You might have got there a glimpse of who our next match is against. We were going to play against Union Berlin, so we decided we need to shore up our midfield. Stefan Bajetic comes in from Liverpool, and this guy has the potential to be absolutely massive for our season. He can defend, he can pass, he can actually win headers, which we were really struggling with having a 5 foot 11 cruise in midfield. So he's going straight into the midfield for this massive derby match. The Berlin derby, the capital city derby, whatever you want to call this match. We had two very even teams. A lot of the Union Berlin's best players have now retired or left the club. And of course, we've strengthened with some top quality international players, just like Luka Jovic. Is he going to be the man that makes the difference? Is it going to be Alex Garcia playing for Union Berlin? There's so many storylines going on in this match, but we're at home. So we're definitely going to try and push for three points. Minamino having the first chance for us there after three minutes. That could easily have been a goal on another day. Union Berlin decide to attack and with their first shot, of course, they get their first goal. So we're behind within 20 minutes. Let's be honest, there's nothing that Stefan can do about a header like that. It's absolutely amazing. But yet again, we've been let down by our defense's total lack of aerial ability. Something we might have to fix before the end of this transfer window. We had another chance. Reese, he was so lethal last year. There's no way that he would have missed a chance like that in the second division. Just before half time, we had another chance and this was controversial. It looked a bit like a handball to me, but the referee confirmed we were going in in the derby match 1-0 down at half time. Could Stefan Bell inspire his players for the second half to win this match? Well, it looked like he could because Jovic all of a sudden was a man reborn. He was influential in a first chance and in a second chance, pressing the ball out wide to Minamino into the box. His shot could have found the top corner, but unfortunately it just found the advert boards. We kept pushing. Reese, could he pull it back across? He didn't choose to. He was selfish. He hit it and it was another wasted chance with just one minute left. Kanate threw one on one. Surely this is the chance. No, it's a great save from Jasper Sillison. I couldn't believe how many chances that we have wasted in this match. Even the corner header at the end as the referee blows his whistle was missed. As he walks into the tunnel, the statistician shows Stefan Bell they actually had nearly double the amount of XG in that game. It should really have been a Hertha Berlin draw at the very least and deadline day passed. We didn't really want to spend any more money on the team. After what we saw in that Union Berlin game, we were making so many chances. It was all about being composed and actually scoring them. Against a very aggressive Cologne side, we had to make sure that we scored every chance we got. We kept getting free kicks in the same kind of area, but unfortunately, we couldn't really do anything with them. The first one being blasted into someone's legs, and then our defensive midfielder being responsible to crossing the ball to our tiny winger. Not a great combination. We did get a penalty, three fouls from Cologne, and we punished them with the last of them. Penalty going in, and our first three points in the Bundesliga. We won our next game against Darmstadt as well, and this put us up all the way into sixth place, which, if you don't know, is a European Cup spot at the end of the season. If we could keep this up, then things were going to get crazy this year. We had another massive match, playing against Red Bull Leipzig, another one of the most hated teams in the league, with one of the most hated players for me on FIFA, Ben Yedder. We had to keep him quiet, and we had to make sure we were solid at the back, which it looked like we probably weren't. Our goalkeeper flailing around on the floor, and thankfully, we just about managed to block the two shots that definitely would have resulted in goals. We then sprang on the counter-attack, and we showed them how to finish. Suat Serdar bursting from defensive midfield through on goal. You'd expect Kanati to be even better at shooting, but his shot was actually saved there by Peter Galaski, and that would be three wins in a row. So we had nine points from three matches. Dortmund were up next, and if there's any team that's going to stop this kind of run, it's probably Dortmund or Bayern Munich.
If the Dortmund game was big for our league position, then the Mainz game was big for our personal ambitions. Our first time we've returning to our former club. Stefan Bell spent 14 years anchoring the defence for Mainz and now he was trying to absolutely crush it and Suat Serdar had the first chance to do it. He is on insane form at the minute. He scores yet another goal. Was Stefan Bell about to crush the hopes of the fans that used to adore him? Well, it looked like we'd finally got a hold over the defence. We have conceded quite a lot of goals this season, but for most of this game, we were absolutely solid. Until that shot right there, where Bergzorg, which is probably the coolest name I've ever heard, managed to score. We did stop the penalty though, so it could have actually been worse. So with the Mainz game complete, we're now basically halfway through the season, and it's clear that our defence needs a little bit more solidity. We missed out on Bella Kocap back in August, so finally we get the man that we wanted in our defence. We get him to join in January. He's tall, he's rapid, and he's strong. Hopefully he'll prevent us from conceding at least five goals this season, just because he can actually win some headers. That's not the only news though. We've also just played them, but it looks like the struggling Borussia Dortmund are also without a manager. Should we apply? Well, we send our application across just in case they'd want us. We'll have to manage this next game with the uncertainty of knowing where we'll actually be managing come the end of the season. We actually found this game against Darmstadt probably harder than we did the game against Leipzig, but still, Kanga would run through and do possibly the weakest shot of the season, giving us the 1-0 win. So as the whistle blows on that game, it's back to our own personal dilemma. Borussia Dortmund want us to join. It was Stefan Bell's Mainz team that actually prevented a title going to Dortmund back in 2023. But let me know if you think we should stay and keep building or move to the second biggest team in Germany. Thanks for watching this video and I can't wait to find out what you think we should be doing in the next episode. Subscribe so you don't miss it and thank you for watching. Cheers and goodbye.